One of the great things that's to foot in America is innovation. And innovation has to be led by great education. And we in Wyoming have the opportunity to build an institution that can provide that with the great emphasis on the science, technology, engineering, and math. The University of Wyoming will create the next generation of scientists who change America and change Wyoming. There are these three initiatives currently underway at different levels of development, the science initiative, the education initiative, and the engineering initiative. But I think we all envision this, the same set of outcomes. We would like for an integrated STEM experience for our students. The science initiative is important to both the education and engineering initiatives in that core sciences really are the gateway for students coming into STEM fields. One of our goals is to make all of these initiatives make an impact in the state of Wyoming in terms of the kinds of students that we can supply the state, but also in terms of economic development and broadening our economy. So the science initiative involves commitments to new facilities, as well as some commitments to some programs. And we want to build facilities that bring together in really creative ways advanced resources for research and teaching, as well as open lab spaces and collision spaces that allow for lab groups and departments that haven't traditionally interacted as much to start getting together and identifying some interesting new ideas to solve problems. Engineering Initiative is a major reinvestment by the state of Wyoming in engineering education, research, and outreach across the state. And what it really is to us is it's a refocusing of our college back to its land-grant mission. For the state, it really creates a 21st century workforce of engineers and computer scientists that will help support not only the existing economy of the state of Wyoming, but also its future economy. The Edge Education Initiative is an effort to bring the College of Education and its programs into a continuous improvement process that builds on the strong history of the past but leaps forward into what the needs of the 21st century classroom are, and specifically for Wyoming classrooms. The Education Initiative will help the university in that it will elevate the College of Education to a position of preeminence because it will be preparing the best of the best teachers. When you have a strong college of education that is considered the preferred provider, that eventually gets out into the broader university in terms of impacting the kinds of instruction that other professors are offering on the university campus, which then tends to translate into greater student success. The Science Initiative formally, if you look at the entire proposal, actually consists of two phases in terms of facilities development which would be a new building that sits on the corner of 9th and Lewis. The building that's proposed as part of the Science Initiative has several important features that will benefit students here as well as the state. One of these is that the building will house active learning classrooms, which will enable the delivery of active learning content or experiential learning for students. And this is something that is our product, if you want to think of it that way, from the university. One of our products is the students and the quality of their education. And this can be achieved through multiple avenues. One of these is to improve the in-class experience of undergraduates. And this can be achieved by improving the educational practices of the faculty here through, for instance, the application of active learning exercises. What's really important about what the University of Wyoming is doing is, is that we're stepping forward and taking the risk to really teach differently. All the national research shows that the way we teach in a lecture format, the traditional ways that you think of when you think of college teaching, are not even close to the best ways to be teaching science. If you really want students to learn to use the science and math and, and other disciplines, reading and writing, they'll do it best if you get them in real problems they've got to solve in groups and get interaction around something they're working on. An active classroom is one where students do something other than sit and passively take notes. In my active learning classroom, lecture, lab, and discussion are combined into a single class meeting. It's seamless. It's all part of learning. These rooms in the new building will have four large lecture rooms, one that seats 50, one that seats 100, one for 150, and one for 200. Totally, we don't have anything like that at UW right now. It would have flat floors, and interestingly, so simple, that's one of the most important parts of an active learning classroom. It's not that tiered, hierarchical, sage-on-the-stage sort of orientation. 
The next element are round tables, and typically the round tables will seat nine people, and within that you could go into groups of three, 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 and enable a lot of collaborative discussion, and really that collaboration. We know that students teaching one another is far more powerful than me trying to, you know, open their minds and pour in information. That empty vessel theory doesn't work. Another avenue to improve the student experience and also eventually the workforce is to offer students increased opportunities for research. You can't train students for cutting edge research when you're using last generation technologies, approaches and facilities. And as part of the building content, there'll be the Center for Advanced Scientific Imaging. This is a really important facility. It's gonna allow imaging and analysis of variable features of the natural and physical environment. Another component of the building that's proposed under the Science Initiative is that it will include research greenhouses. This is important to multiple departments on campus. For instance, anybody doing research within ecosystem science and management, plant sciences, botany, molecular biology. All of these individuals would rely upon growing plants in controlled settings. And so it's very important to have controlled growth settings for plant genetic research. And this is a value in terms of the student experience and their ability to perform research. And it's also important in terms of state outcomes when we seek to improve the quality of products for producers across the state. The third piece is this building will have in it the new form of laboratory, research laboratory design that is now common in industry. These are open laboratories where multiple PIs share space. It's much more efficient in terms of cost for the institution, but it also reflects the current high level of interdisciplinarity that happens in research now. The very nature of science is changing. The very nature of, of I'll say, education is changing. And it's more about cross-disciplinary, transdisciplinary research and education. And so these collision spaces provide the environment where we can work together on large, complex problems. And if we provide the environment that encourages that, then our students and our faculty will exchange ideas, and people from different disciplines will exchange ideas. We expect astronomers, microbiologists, chemists, ecologists, evolutionary biologists, all to interact within this single facility using the same kinds of tools, and they'll start thinking about how they can solve complex problems across disciplines just by nature of having this core facility that they wouldn't have otherwise addressed. We support collaborative teams of people who are working around central themes that are important to our research interest and the interest of the state of Wyoming. Wyoming is really blessed with some tremendous supercomputing resources here within the state, uh, not only here on campus, but over at uh, NCAR on the way to Cheyenne. A large part of our faculty here and student body use those supercomputers as part of their, their research programs. Through our partnership with the National Center for Atmospheric Research, the University of Wyoming has access to 20% of uh, one of the world's fastest computers devoted to science. Also locally on campus, we have Cluster, a supercomputer that's available for faculty as well as students. The way I like to think about supercomputers is in many ways like a microscope. Every time you get a bigger, better microscope that gives you finer resolution, you see phenomena that you couldn't see before. For me, and I think a lot of faculty who are involved in the science initiative, we are interested in providing awesome opportunities for our students. Giving them a broad-based training in uh, critical thinking and technical fields, I think positions them well for their future careers. Other way that they'll benefit is through participation, for instance, in the Wyoming Research Scholars Program. So this is a program that provides students the opportunity and funding to participate in a research faculty's lab and have hands-on experience in research. So the Wyoming Research Scholars Program was funded by the state of Wyoming this program is aimed entirely at student success. Students are really getting the opportunity to do research and do science and practice science rather than just reading about it and learning about it in their classrooms. The program began in the fall of 2015 and they come from departments all across campus. So we have mathematicians and astronomers and biologists and chemists, all departments across the campus. It's meant to attract our top students from Wyoming to stay in state from both high school graduates and, and community college graduates. 
He's also some of our students will graduate from here and be some of the top scientists in the state and they may very well be the students who are of tomorrow who start new technology, start new businesses in the state. By elevating the core science programs at this university, both in terms of education and research, it will help to bring a more competent and capable workforce to the state. And it is true that will allow for diversification of our economy. High-tech businesses will not move to the state of Wyoming without a very active research climate. This will help Wyoming's economic diversity. This will help Wyoming students stay in Wyoming if they can find jobs here. And the big hope is that Wyoming students are so well prepared and have the vision that they can start companies here and employ more Wyoming people right here. It's a wonderful place to live. It's a wonderful place to do business. We want to help our graduates do that for Wyoming. At the University of Wyoming, you've got something very different here. You've got a culture that right now has people that compete at the world-class level in research, that love to teach, and they're already collaborating. It's just the best possible outcome when you can have positive synergies, like-minded people that are motivated to teach, to learn new information, then again in turn to teach that information, put them together, it's a great thing. But to be competitive and to really take the state forward, we need to make that investment. These initiatives are important because we need to invest in the university to promote and drive this change in both how we do teaching and research so that we can remain competitive and remain a flagship university for the state of Wyoming. And so I see going forward is now that we've been given these initiatives and the money but now we have to execute. We're really at the point with the science initiative, we can bring all the investments that have come forward in the last few years. All those together are an incredible investment in a short time in STEM that the state has made to move not only the University of Wyoming, but the whole state forward in an area that's critical for success nationally and for the future of the state. Wyoming is confronted with the perennial issue of declining revenues and discovering that if it's going to build itself, it's going to pull itself up by the bootstraps. We, for too often, relied on somebody else to take care of us. We're going to build this ourselves. Otherwise, the future will be defined for us. And that's the issue that confronts the legislature and the governor. But it's going to be tough. The legislature's got to stay the course. The governor's got to stay the course. Your heart is where your treasure is. And for the state, where we put our treasure, will reflect what matters in our heart. And if it matters to us, as much as we say it does, to diversify the economy, build the university, create educational opportunities for our children, and build a future that works, then the money will be there. And it's just a simple test. You either man up and get it done, or you let it falter. Because we are Wyoming, and we can do this.